Hey, what's up guys? Zach here today and we are going to go over a couple alternative ways of cleaning your pit that I have come across through just asking around and two, some great comments from subscribers to my channel, which I greatly appreciate. It is so hard to learn things on your own and when you've got a community like we've got on my channel where we just swap ideas and constantly just get better, really great. So if you've got any recommendations on ways to clean the pit balls that I haven't covered in a previous video or covered in this video, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you don't mind, please go ahead, smash that like button for me and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be made aware when I come out with future content just like this video right here. So let's go ahead and get into some things that I've been doing recently that I like a lot better than I was doing earlier on. And one thing uh, that I wanna recommend is that you go out and you get you some of these bad boys right here, okay? If you have an outdoor kitchen, keep some of them in your kitchen. If you don't, have some in the kitchen inside, or wherever you keep your cleaning stuff. Because this right here is like having a bottle of cleaner and a roll of paper towels all in one that you don't have to put them back where you found them or you don't have to locate both of them or nothing like that. Cleaning wipes, they're fantastic. If you watched my first video, the way that I cleaned my glass was I took the door off, which is very easy to do, you just lift up, and I sprayed off the water hose and scrubbed it with a little bit of fast orange, and that gets it squeaky clean, no problem. That's, I think, probably the best method if you have put off cleaning your glass for, you know, 10 cooks or something, and you've got a nice thick black layer of soot and buildup on the glass where you can't see nothing. I won't take the door off, give it a good scrub. But what I have figured out is that if I just, every two to three cooks, I take these things out and I wipe it down and I wipe it down on the inside, it takes everything off with ease. So instead of having to do a whole project, setting a lot of time aside, just wipe it down, spend about two or three minutes on it. That keeps your glass nice and clean so you can see your food cooking, no big deal. Another thing that I like to use these wipes for, and you don't have to use these, you're not necessarily trying to make something so clean in this section of cleaning that you know you wanna be able to eat off of it or see through it like some clear glass, but that is your grease trough. This runs off the back of your grease tray and that can get cluttered and it can get little bits of debris and such built up in it and that can catch on fire. And so it's important that from time to time, you either get a towel or just a paper towel or some of these babies right here, run it through there, scoop that stuff out, get it nice and clean. Great tip, make sure that you're doing that. Next, the cleanest part of my smoker and the cleanest part of your smoker should always be what? Who can tell me? Can you tell me? It's the temperature probe. It's your internal temperature thermometer, and it's right here. And mine looks like it belongs on the exhaust of a Harley Davidson because I keep mine squeaky clean. If you are a serious cooker, if you are a serious barbecue person, then you know that the quality of your food comes from your ability to control temp, to know the temp of your cabin and to also use your meat probes to monitor the internal temp of your meat. You're not going to be able to get the internal temp of the meat where you want it consistently and in the right amount of time if you don't have good control and a good idea of what's going on inside the cabin. The best way to make sure that you've got that figured out is to keep that thermometer clean. I do that every cook. Take one of these, wipe it down, it comes clean really easily, and you're increasing your odds of having dead on idea of what's going on inside of there and what's happening with your meat. So let's move on to some more methods I'm trying that uh, a subscriber recommended for my racks and my grease pan and my water tray. 
All right, so this is something that a subscriber of mine recommended, so I'm trying this today. What I've done is I've pulled all of my racks, my grease tray, and my water pan out. And let me tell you something, <laughs> they needed to be cleaned. I'm probably uh, right there with a lot of y'all. Uh, I just don't clean them as often as maybe I should. I don't know, but everything seems to turn out all right. Nobody I've cooked for has turned into a Ninja Turtle or anything, so everybody seems to be all right. But today we're cleaning them because they needed it bad. But what I've done here is I've went down to my local hardware supply store. You can get these at just about any Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that. And I picked up this tough tote, which is big enough for me to lay my grates in flat in the bottom. And I've just added some soap. I had a little bit of dishwashing detergent and some of my go-to fast orange. Uh, a lot of people recommend Simple Green. I plan on getting some of that for my next cleaning. I'll probably do a little review on that, let you know how I thought it did. And what I did is about an hour ago, I just come out here and I put everything into this tote, put some soap on it, filled it up with water, and just been letting it set. It, everything just fits in this tote really nicely. Works out really good. As you can see, lots of grease floating around. You can see that this is really, really stuck on there good. A lot of buildup. So tell me that that don't need to be cleaned. Like I said, no Ninja Turtles yet. I'm hopefully just gonna be able to spray that off as that soap continues to break that stuff down. The good news is, is once you get yourself one of these totes, you can clean your grates in it, clean it out, and then you've got storage for your pellets. Dry storage, you take your, uh, your bag, roll up the top, get you, you've got enough room here for about three bags, and you just, it locks down, lock the lid down, now you've got a two for one. You've got your pellet storage and you've got a tub that'll fit your grates that you can clean your grates in. Y'all make sure you check out a video I've got coming up. I'm gonna show y'all some ways to keep it clean so you don't have to clean it as often, which is pretty big. Requires a little bit of extra effort, but ends up saving you a lot of effort in the long run. So there's a couple more aspects of this smoker that need to be cleaned that you need to know about. If you haven't seen other videos about how to clean the smoker or my previous video on how to clean the smoker, I wanna go ahead and address these. This is your ash pot. This is where everything that burns by the igniter and that the fan burns, turns into ash, falls into this pot right here. If you do not clean this, you will have issues. You will have jams, you will have black smoke in your, in your smoker, and that will make your food taste really bad, so you don't want that. This is super easy to clean. All I've ever done is just dump out the ash. That's what I do. But you do have a little bit of buildup. I wouldn't get too worried about it. You can focus on it a whole lot and try to like detail it and get it to where you can see the metal and all that sort of stuff if you want to, but it's just gonna get dirty again the very next time. And it doesn't really have any effect on it if it's a little dirty or if it's really clean. So I choose a little dirty. Uh, some people recommend uh, taking a shop vac, vacuuming that out real well and then you go into here and make sure you get all your dust out. I just sort of just brush that stuff out with my hand and I've had no problem so far. So you can do what you want to with that information. Also, the grease tray in the back, always make sure you're cleaning that out. I keep mine cleaned out about every second cook, uh, depending on how big of something I cook. If, I cook. if you cook, you know, several Boston Butts or several racks of ribs or a couple briskets in this thing, you're going to need to clean that drip tray every time because it's a lot more goes through the smoker than what maybe you think. So just make sure that you're not overfilling that. You don't want to cause a fire. You don't want to have that stuff running out on your patio or your deck or wherever. And by keeping that thing clean on a regular basis, you can eliminate that problem. I've had a couple people ask me about the inside cabin, uh, how, to, how to clean it or what to do with it. And to be honest with you, I don't worry about it that much. I clean my thermometer, I clean my glass, clean my racks, my water pan, and my drip tray and my grease rack. Other than that, the walls, I'm not too worried about it. We might check back in in a year and a half, two years from now, and it might really need it, I don't know. But right now, 
has no effect on the cook. It has no effect on the quality of the food. From time to time, what I'll do is I'll go in with a little bit of olive oil spray or just some Pam, whatever you got, and I'll just kind of spray things down a little bit. All right, so now that we've got everything clean, all we gotta do now is just put everything back into its rightful place. Just like that. So when you're looking at this thing, this is gonna look like a handle and you're gonna wanna try to put it in like this. If that's not the case. This goes in first and when you get to the back, it is gonna sort of act there's a little lip right here. You want to go over that and then one more time over it and it's going to act as a spacer so that as your grease runs down through there, it drops into that grease trough. Racks on racks on racks on racks. And just like that, as far as I'm concerned anyway, I'm good for like another at least 10, 15 cooks. I don't clean it as often as I should. I clean the important parts like my glass and my my grease tray and my grease trough and my thermometer. But I don't worry so much about these racks every cook or every three or four cooks. You do what you wanna do. Always just do you and do whatever you gotta do to make good barbecue, baby. Anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for watching my video. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can catch more content just like this. If you have any suggestions of how to clean it better, things that you like that you've discovered, let me know. I don't like to clean. I'm looking for better ways. Anyway, we'll see y'all in the next video.